Hi folks and welcome to another Postscript video. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast session. I wanted to just show you the 7imagine app that I mentioned in the podcast. It's a free app. It's originally designed for clients of 7IM, that's 7 Investment Management. They're my sponsors here on Meaningful Money. Um, and if you have an account with them and money managed by them, then you can see it and log in to see the balances and the breakdown of assets and stuff using the 7 Imagine app. But I mention it today because there's a, an element of the app called My Future, which is a financial planning future forecasting app. Nothing weird or you know, tarot cards or anything, but it does the mathematical heavy lifting for your financial planning into the future. So let's dive into the app and I'll show you how it works. Okay, here's the 7 Imagine app here in the bottom right, and I shall just press that. We've got some uh, Easter themed stuff going on at the minute, but you've got three sections here. Oh, there go the Easter eggs. And the one we're looking for for the financial planning bit is the one in the middle, My Future. So let me just click that. And then you get the option here, this is my first plan, or I've saved My Future plans before. So I'm going to click, this is my first plan here on the left. And the first screen is asking you to tell the app about your family. So I'm going to loosely base this on my own circumstances. Uh, quick caveat though, any figures and stuff are entirely made up. Okay, so if I make myself look richer than I am, then so be it. Uh, but I do want you to take careful note of the uh, birthday that I'm put in, uh, about to put in. So you can send me lovely gifts and stuff on the 23rd of February next year. And yes, I am... 43 years old. I'm also employed, so I'm just going to leave that annual income amount there uh, and accept it. Then I grab Jo in here from the right, so I just pick her up and drag her into the circle, give her a name. Better call her Joanne, she prefers that. Um, and then we put in her birthday. Don't tell her I did this, okay? She's a little bit older than me, only a little bit though. Uh, so there we go, she's employed and well, it's, uh, there's a couple of ways you can enter s stuff in these kind of fields. You can either twiddle the wheels like this or you can press the little keyboard icon to the right and it brings up the normal uh, iPad uh, keyboard and you can just enter it like that. Okay, let's bring the girls in. So if I put my eldest in first, she's now 18. So she's 23rd of December 1999. Um, and you can see under here we'd like to consider school fees, university, house deposits, stuff like that. So you can build in some planning scenarios as you go along. I'm not going to do that because uh, we'll be here forever. Just put my uh, second baby girl in. Uh, that's Kate and she's the 21st of March 2000. Oops, too fast. 2003. There we go. So that's the family in place. Click accept. And it moves on to the next bit, which is, as you can see from the top, tell us about your property. So let's just say we'll put our house in, just drag one across, give it a value. And again, <laughs> don't take any notice of these values, okay? Outstanding mortgage amount, you can just drag up and it'll reset. Let's call it a £200,000 mortgage with 15 years remaining. You can see you click on the bottom here, my main home, that's ticked currently. If I uh, press the X, it assumes it's a rental property and asks me to put in the rental income. So I'm just going to accept that. Let's just say there's uh, a rental property as well worth 200 owned jointly with, say, a 100 and, I don't know, let's call it £130,000 mortgage, but with 25 years remaining. And let's say uh, I'm getting, say, 750 a month in rent from that property let's just say. All right, so let's uh, imagine that that's the property thing done. You can see how easy it is though to build up uh, a picture of your existing situation. Lots of drag and drop. So this is now money and pension. So let's just say I have an ISA and I'm fairly adventurous. So I'm going to put a six and ooh, there we go, six and a half percent assumed growth rate on it, which is fairly realistic for an adventurous investor after costs. It's not worth 100 grand though, let's just say it's worth 39, but I'm putting in, say, 300 quid a month into that. Okay. Let's give Joe an ISA as well. She's a little bit more cautious than me, so I'm going to give her a 5% growth rate. Say it's worth about 23, and we're paying about 200 pounds a month, say, into that one. Oh, a little bit less. Oops. Quite sensitive. There we go. I will just leave it at that. 220. Okay. Uh, let's imagine I have a pension. 
Uh, you can put in that it's a final salary pension, or for most of us it'll be an other. Uh, let's say my employer's putting 750 uh, in per month, and the current value is say I don't know, random figure, 46 grand. I'm going to make it a six and a half percent assumed growth rate, though, for, to reflect my fairly adventurous stance on investments. I'm going to say that Joe doesn't have a pension. Um, and let's just say we got 10 grand in the bank earning the square root of NAFOL. Okay, so let's just say that's a picture of our liquid money. A couple of ISAs, pension, and we're saving into the ISAs and uh, companies paying into a pension for me, say. Okay, so we accept that. Now, any other assets? So you can see on the right, vehicle, business. Well, in my case, let's say uh, I'm a business owner. That's why the employer is paying in for me because I am the employer, uh, essentially. And let's say the value of that business is pretty significant. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can either put in the whole business value and then adjust the ownership. But I'm just going to assume that my share is worth three quarters of a million. Expect fairly conservative growth on that, 3% a year, and drop that in. And that'll do. You can put other stuff. So if you've got a yacht or you know something like that, you can just drag that in. But that'll do for building up a picture. So then you click Accept, and you get an acknowledgement, and click Show Me. And now the system is building a picture of my wealth. It's basically doing the maths behind here. So we've got mortgage there, and value, things like that. So that sound... Uh, about right, that mortgage seems a bit light, um, but uh, let me just hit OK for the purposes of this. Ah, that's why. Um, so you see the slider on the bottom, you can look at your current position, your likely position in five years, and you'll see as I do that, in orange there, the mortgage value drops because it's assuming that I've paid it off and it'll, uh, there's two mortgages, remember my whole mortgage and the rental mortgages in this, and when I get to retirement, which uh, we'll get back to in a minute, this is sort of a, a proposed picture of what I might be worth. Um, you can break that down, so if I uh, click on Pete's wealth there, and then I click on the individual segments of the pie, you can see along the bottom what that's talking about, Pete's assets, um, and the little business icon there, pension, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. And then you can move that around uh, and see what those individual pots might be worth at the different points in time. Okay, even if you wanted to, you can break down, or if you hold money on the Seven Islands platform, it'll even break it down into specific assets, so funds within uh, your individual holdings. So all very cool, but let's click My Future. Okay, so now the system needs to understand what our expectations might be during retirement. So this is quite important. So here it gives uh, a breakdown of what it thinks your current net income is, what that might be by its assumed retirement date. The system assumes to start with that you'll retire at state pension age. We can move that around in a minute. But there's some buttons there. I'll spend nothing. I'll spend less. I'll spend about the same, more, much more. So you can set your expectation. I'm going to leave it where it is at 70% and click accept. And then it says, okay, what kind of pension type might I be, might I have? I'm going to say that's a drawdown. I'm going to take the maximum tax-free cash, say. And then you can choose either a regular amount from your pension fund. I'm just going to say I'm going to draw 4% from my pension fund, say, right? The magic 4%. And click accept. And then 7 Imagine will now build my plan. So you get a few sort of uh, hints as you open up this for the first time. Assumed life expectancy of 90 years, but you can move that around. Assumed retirement age of 68 for me. Uh, and just some tips there about uh, what to press and stuff and that you can save it. So you can see at the top, Joanne retires age 68, Pete retires age 68. Uh, I'm going to drag those both back to age 60 for me. 61 for Joanne because I'm a toy boy. You can see there's little markers there as to when the state pension might be. If I grab our death age and drag it back to say age 100, then okay. Uh, so now I'm going to live to 100. So there's a couple of sort of switches on here. So first of all, you can click today's money and it flattens the chart out. In other words, it takes account of inflation. You can click growth rates here and it'll show you all the assumed growth rates for the different elements of the plan. Uh, you can 
toggle between showing the income so what you're looking at at the minute is a cash flow chart where the income is coming from to meet your uh, outgoings and then a wealth uh, chart I tend to stay on the income one and then there's a key for the income there so uh, the sort of light green there is savings income uh, the uh, dark green is state pension and savings withdrawn is where I've had to oops um, you know dip into capital which is absolutely fine so you can add an event so let's say uh, and you can drag this panel you can see underneath it the highlighted bar so if I drag that back to the same point at which I now set to retire and click add event uh, and let's say it's a transfer of my business value I'm going to enter a name for the event at the top right there and call it sell biz uh, let's say I sell all my business and I transfer it into the bank account okay so at that point in time I'm transferring the value of my business into my bank account because I've sold up and fully retired now what does that do so that's uh, as I say the income chart if I click full details this is pretty cool a nice 3d image and it can break down uh, the value of each of the accounts and the assets that you've got so if you click on each one you can see it so if I click on my business there it highlights it and you can see at that point it's a little red triangle with a warning to say that it's running out but of course that's because I've sold it and you see the uh, line drops off there and I've put the money in the bank so you can see there's a big increase in the value of that line and so you can just get some sense as to where the money is going to come from each year but sort of key really is the fact that if this chart turns red then you've got a problem and so you might need to change something so if I drag that straight back well in this case uh, it's obviously uh, an extremely good picture because I, the chart never turns red even if I lived to 119 uh, unlikely um, but if yours turns red, you can either die earlier, which is obviously something you don't have a lot of control of, unless there's a one-way ticket to uh, Switzerland, um, or you need to save more or whatever. And so you can adjust and play with it. Just to uh, give you a hint, there's a more button here, slightly sort of uh, not very obvious up in the top right, and got some help things there. And also there's a link here to see my future assumptions, and you can change various things here you can see and you can hit restore defaults and all that sort of stuff so uh, you know there's an awful lot of maths going on behind the scenes here but it's a great really good fun way to play with your future financial planning enjoy okay hope you found that useful interesting definitely download the app seven imagine there's links to it underneath the video and just have a play with it you can save up to three different financial plans so you can chop things around and change them and uh, just see how you feel about it all but definitely recommended to do some of the maths for you take inflation into account all that sort of thing so download it have a play let me know how you get on cheers